Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll be having a look at the GFS, GM, ECMWF and the GFS Ensembles. Do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you do like and subscribe. But today we've been having a very pleasant day, very uh, typical spring-like day. We've got a ridge of high pressure, upper airs are reasonably mild, around 5 degrees at 850 HPA. Um, which has allowed temperatures to rise into the mid-teens quite widely. Cloud this morning has uh, broken away and many places seeing uh, some beautiful sunshine this afternoon. And It's been a very nice day um, and it looks like that's going to continue the next uh, over tomorrow perhaps before weather fronts start to come in overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. So we've still got this area of high pressure further south and eastwards. You're going to hold on for it a bit longer. But you can see areas of low pressure rattling in off the Atlantic. And you can see there's quite a cold air mass within that as well. And there's potential that areas could go quite cold again by Wednesday, Thursday. Um, at least quite cold for this time of year. High single digits um, uh, for the daytime highs. And maybe 2, 3, 4 degrees as the lows. And then over hills, especially in Scotland, there's a chance for maybe some sleet or snow. Uh, again, not going to be too disruptive, but again, just something to watch out for. If we go back to the pressure patterns and we run through it, you can see that low pressure does move in across the Atlantic uh, over the UK and then we go into this cold sort of northwesterly airstream, typical spring-like um, polar maritime air mass uh, when we've got low pressure involved will be quite uh, a lot of showers um, coming in, a lot of convection so there's potential for maybe some hail, uh, maybe sleet, uh, growl pool uh, and maybe even some snow over higher ground and you can even see maybe a few thunderstorms in that but it would be very much a sunshine and showers sort of day um, but it's still quite blustery windy and feeling pretty cold if you have a look at that air mass it's pretty cold and that's why there's the chance of some snow over higher ground but if we continue to move through, see low pressure continues trying to push in off the Atlantic, but never really completely clears through the UK. The centre of the lows always sit towards sort of Iceland, and it means we're not going get, to be getting the worst of the winds and the worst of the rain, but we're still going to have a lot of, uh, sort of, uh, every now and again we're going to get frontal system move through. We'll have quite frequent snow showers, uh, sorry, rain showers and potentially a few snow showers over hills uh, quite strong winds coming in off that westerly wind but as we head towards the end of the weekend it does look like there may be a pressure build especially to our east which is going to send a potential sort of heat wave to europe uh, maybe seeing 20 degrees plus in europe and for parts of the uk we could be seeing quite warm temperatures now you do see these upper air temperatures you can see Generally quite warm over France, Spain, 10 degrees. That could give our first 20 degrees um, uh, for the UK. It would, if this came off, primarily be based further southwards and eastwards. As you can see, further westwards. It's quite a uh, temperature contrast, and there will be a weather front strung along there. This will be quite cloudy, and even though the upper airs are reasonably mild, it will be quite chilly uh, and heavy rain. Perhaps probably over Ireland, maybe parts of Wales into northwest and England, Scotland, that's where we'd probably see that weather front set up. For further south and eastwards could be quite warm, for the north and westwards could be more windy and rain. So, again, it's it's about a week and a bit away now, so it's difficult to say exactly um, uh, how this is going to set up, because remember, 100 miles east or westwards can dramatically change the conditions, but it's very interesting to see this first sort of southerly push of air we've had uh, this spring. Beyond that, the high pressure does start to break down before more high pressure tries to build it off the Atlantic uh, from the Azores. But we do remain in a fairly sort of easterly based uh, um, airflow uh, with high pressure trying to reach to our north. This means it's going to feel pretty chilly. Um, now, if this was in the summer, you'd say it's going to feel quite warm, but there's still reasonably cold air over towards Scandinavia, especially to, to the surface. And you can see the upper air is around minus five. That could, again, bring uh, some quite cold conditions, growl pool, hail showers, and again, I can't rule out the potential for an odd isolated snow shower with that. But generally, it will feel, it will be quite pleasant, especially for the north where you're under a higher pressure. Um, but again, uh, it will 
feel nice in the sun but when you get those rain uh, when you get rain or sleet showers hail showers and any cloud it will feel pretty cold again it's 312 hours so you have to take it with a pinch of salt with that but as we're towards the end of the run high pressure really does build in and right at the end of this gfs run we go into a northerly plunge with a proper polar front um, which would bring widespread snow but um yeah, I highly doubt that's going to come off, and we'll have a look at the ensembles in a minute. That's very much unlikely to happen. If it did happen, it would be one of the coldest ever April spells, um, looking at those upper airs. Uh, that would be some of the coldest air at our latitude. It probably will be the coldest air at our latitude throughout the world, so I highly doubt that's going to come off. But just interesting to see what the GFS is pumping out, um, even as we head towards spring and summer. If we now have a look at the GM run, uh, you can see again very similar pattern with that cold polar maritime air mass after the next uh, day of uh, day or two of pleasant conditions. We continue with those low pressures coming in off the Atlantic, bringing those colder conditions with rain uh, and uh, quite windy conditions, and then high pressure tries to build in um, towards next week, but doesn't really do it. Um, and we continue under a low pressure influence with a quite chilly northeasterly airflow. And this is as I, as I said difference between a few hundred miles because you can see with the high pressures further eastwards and maybe a bit further southwards so eastern europe seeing more of the warmer conditions and towards the uk we're seeing quite cold conditions with that low pressure i wouldn't be surprised to see a snow event in scotland especially over higher ground further southwards it's probably again um too late in the year to see any widespread snow but you i wouldn't rule out some snow over some hills um uh, uh, and overnight, perhaps, with this setup. Again, the GFS and GM are showing different scenarios, so it's going to be difficult to pin down exactly what's going to happen at this stage. But it does look like the next week, at least, we're going to be low pressure, dominated, especially for the northwards, feeling pretty chilly in a colder air mass, uh, and there's a chance some things, interesting things can happen with when higher pressure tries to build back in. We can just see what the ECMWF goes for now, and if we run through this, you can see again, Westerly airflow, cold polar maritime air mass, and as we head towards day 10, high pressure does build in. It's kind of a mix between the GM and GFS. We are pulling these northerly winds down, but we aren't building that high pressure in as much. And you can see generally between air masses, quite cold air masses to our north, and quite a warm air mass to our south and southeast. So it be interesting to see with that. And if we go to the temperature deviation, you can see the clashes of those air masses, quite warm over the continent, and then quite cool over towards the north of uh, the UK into to uh, sort of Iceland. So it'll be interesting to see um, really which one of these comes off. If we now have a look at the GFS ensembles uh, for London, you can have a look at the temperature and uh, precipitation. You can see quite mild at the moment. Uh, that's why we're seeing quite pleasant spring-like days. Then it drops down with low pressure moving in. And then we see that sort of cold polar maritime air mass moving. With that, it does definitely look like it's going to turn quite cool again, maybe five, six, seven degrees below average. But again, I don't su suspect there's any real chance of snow. Because London's, you know, towards the southeast of the UK, we are on the, uh, in London, we are on the lower end of precipitation, especially in the short term, and even the longer term, doesn't look like too much precipitation. And you can see, we do get a rise in the temperature is quite a substantial rise and that's where we potentially could see those southerly winds build in but you can see some autonomous members do quickly drop off back quite cold again so probably similar to what the gm or even the gfs in the longer term was going for so yeah it'll be very interesting to see what happens in that longer term quite a big spread but it does does look like generally it will be quite dry especially for the southwards for the northwards it's still a bit on a knife edge could be quite wet and windy or the high pressure could extend further northwards it can make it a little bit dry but nothing too extraordinary is going to come up uh, in the next uh, in the next week to 10 days perhaps beyond that things could go warmer or even could go colder again really depends on that higher pressure orientation um, but at least for the next week or so it does look like we'll have some nice uh, spring spring like pleasant days to end march but there's also a decent chance we do see a couple days where it's quite cold windy and rainy so um, do make sure if you are going to plan to go outside do your exercise um or on 28th of March, uh, I think it is, when um, Rule of Six Outdoors comes back indoor, uh, back in force, and you can meet people outside. Um, make sure you uh, make sure you do um, check the weather forecast, as it could be a nice day or it could be quite a cold day. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe, and I'll see you again for another video uh, soon.